Welcome to an encounter with the Spirit, Word, and Prayer through the prolific apostolic and teaching ministry of Apostle Femi Lazarus, lead pastor of Sphere of Light Church Global. It is his vision to raise God's end time on. God has not called you to prove you are the best. He has not. As a leader, you are a broker of gift and talent. So, brace up for an experience. I want to show you a few things that possibly many believers don't understand. And I want us to listen attentively. Now, some may want to ask, why, why is the Lord trying to bring his children to the state of health and healing? Particularly as touching their minds. Touching their minds. Maybe I should not use there now. She used the word house. Let me show you a scripture. Show you two scriptures. I showed the workers one on Sunday. I'm going to show you another one. And I'm going to have to lay some very strong foundations so that we do not trivialize what's going on. Amen. Now turn your Bibles please to the book of Luke chapter number 4. Luke chapter number 4. Luke 4 verse 18. Luke 4 verse 18. Amen. If you are there, say amen. All right. Let me read from here. Now, this was Jesus speaking. Maybe for the sake of contextual understanding, we need to start from verse 14. Um, the church must embrace the culture of diligent reading of the Bible. Is that okay? Very important. Now, look from verse 14. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region around about. Nobody is announced suddenly in the spirit realm. Every announcement is a product of a breakthrough in the spirit. Is that clear? Verse 15 now. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up. And, sorry, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. That's the word it says there. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. He was quoting Isaiah now. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken hearted. To preach deliverance to the captives. And recovering of sight to the blind. And to set at liberty them that are bruised. Now that's the dimension of the anointing that the Bible referred to upon Jesus. One, to preach the good news to the poor. The second is to heal the broken hearted. And particularly, please listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to have to give some very strong emphasis. In this part of the world where we care little or not at all about um, the mind, about subjects like joy, like love work. And I, I've said it, that an average Nigerian, maybe by extension African, is already traumatized. So we, we, we don't really see importance to subject like to heal the broken hearted. So we, we tend to approach subject like this like from, if I'm not happy, who should be happy? Are you following me? 
And because we, we tend to pay little or no attention to subjects like this, we keep on hurting ourselves with words, with our actions. We, 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 we seem not to understand the significance. I want to link this subject with operating in power. You know, some people just believe that maybe Apostle is just teaching some friendly subject. You have no idea. <laughs> we are dealing with the root. The reason why there's powerlessness in the first place. In homes, in churches, in ministries. That's the root. Follow me. Are you with me? Are you being blessed? We're getting somewhere. So Jesus said, He has anointed me. Now, there were two forms of anointing referred to as touching healing. Let's look at the second one so we can compare. The book of Acts of the Apostles, chapter number 10. Quite a popular scripture. Acts 10. Am I? Okay, sorry. Yeah. Heart of the Apostles, chapter number 10, verse 38. It said, How God anointed Jesus Christ of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of what? Of who? The devil. For God was with him. So this kind of healing is talking about healing in the body through oppression. Now, people don't know that sometimes some sicknesses are not just like that because of the malfunctioning of the body. Behind many sicknesses are the spirit of infirmities. So sometimes people pray for the sick to be healed and they don't get healed because it is not healing. It is casting out of a devil. And when you check out the spirit, the body goes back to normal. So evil spirit can manipulate the functioning of the body. Behind sickness is like cancer. I share this story. It is amazing how we trivialize teaching. That that's the place of deliverance. If you fall under the anointing ignorant, you rise up ignorant. <laughs> that's the thing. A woman came to my teaching in Lagos, I was teaching. I've always been teaching for a long time. I teach first. It doesn't matter what will happen, I will teach first. Came to the meeting I was ministering. Had high blood pressure. Had diabetes. Was obese. She sat down in the meeting. I'm not sure she even came trusting God to be healed. She just came to be blessed. We've not met. We've only spoken online, so she thought since I was ministering in that part of the country, she would be there. And, you know, somewhere along the line, I noticed she got up to, um, I don't know, but I noticed some people quickly gathered around her because her rapper fell. So, I just... so she never came back. And after the meeting, she called me. I said, do you know what happened? I said, no. She said she shrank. Just sitting under the word shrank. She went home to check. She had lost 14 kg. No doctor. No liposo. Under the anointing of... Are you following what I'm saying here? Guess what? Diabetes left. High blood pressure. The word of God is powerful. And I can tell you stories from morning till night about simple things that the word got done. So there is the anointing for healing our bodies, but there is the dimension of anointing for healing the broken hearted. Why? Why are people in pain? We, we seem to focus on the aspect of the devil operating from what we have seen in Nollywood some witches trying to fly at night and drink blood. But we, we forget that behind pain, behind trauma, 
behind afflictions in the mind. That's where the devil is. And why does it look like the devil seems to be interested in believers going through pain? Because as long as you are in pain, it will be difficult to walk in love. It will. It will be difficult to walk in love. So what is after? Is your love work? That's why we can be fasting. And the time of fasting is the time everybody wants to annoy you. Everything irritates you. Somebody at work wants to do something that will make you angry. Why is everything after your heart? Because the devil is after your love work. And that's why, see, <laughs> are you with me? Can I step a bit deeper? Mm. That's why you must get the home front right. Because if you don't get that part right, it means your attack won't be far away. It won't. Anything can happen and you are so close to where the devil can manipulate you and sift you off major seasons through offense. Check. It is when people are at the helm of breakthrough that those who are the closest misbehave. Get the person tripped off. Get off walking in love. Anything you say is like sing, sounding symbols. You can't really command things. Then the season is missed. You repeat the cycle and keep going on and on and on. And on. Love walk. That's one secret of power we, we've not come to really embrace. To any result we are seeing in Nigerian church, it can be 100 times more if we understand love work. Oh God. 100 times more. The kind of authority we'll carry when we get this part right. Careful, I want to say a few things, but you know, there, are, there are things that we call authority in the Nigerian church that, are, that not, not, not the way God will expect us to manifest authority. Sometimes they are a reflection of the fact that we are broken on the inside. Are you with me? Somebody say love walk. Say it again, say love walk. Say it again, love walk. Say it again, love walk. It's powerful. That's by far, if not the most important subject to be discussed. Because even faith, look at what the Bible says, Hebrews 11, start the reading from verse 1. Hebrews 11, turn your Bibles there. Hebrews 11, let's start reading from verse 1. Hebrews 11. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Yes, continue. Look at it. For by it the elders obtained a good report, right? Good. Through faith we understand that the world were framed by the word of God so that the things which I hope you know that verse 2 already contradict many of our philosophies about faith. That the elders did not obtain results by faith. They obtained report by faith. Report is higher than result. You may not touch it, but it has done something to you. That's report. Faith is not faith just because you got what you are asking for. Faith is faith when the process changes you. Is that okay now? What is happening to you while you are waiting? What is happening while you were trusting God? That is faith. By it, we got what? Report. What was the report of Abel? Because he was among the elders. <laughs> now, go to verse 3, please. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made from the things which do appear. Yes? By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gift, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Yes? By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, 
and he was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Yes. So without faith, it is impossible to do what? To please God. Why? For he that comes to God must first believe that he what? He is. So it means that if something is wrong with your faith life, you can't please God. It doesn't matter how holy you think you are. Now look at it. Galatians 5, 6. Galatians 5, 6. Let's, let's link this together. Because I, I notice I have to make give you this background today. Galatians 5, 6. Are you there? All right. Can you give us another screen? Look at it. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything, nor uncircumcision, but what? Faith, which worketh by love. If without faith, it is impossible to please God. The Bible is saying that faith is activated by what? Love. Why? Why? Look up. Let's, let's, let me just tie this up, okay? Why, is faith, why does faith function through what? Love. Does it like it makes sense? Like say, I'm believing God for something. And in the process, I'm eating on somebody. Your faith is empty. Is empty. We must get to that point. Listen to what I'm saying. Now, this may sound tough. That's why I said I'm have to go use some strong words. We will have to get to that point where we check our lives as believers. There's no human being you are keeping malice with. That doesn't mean you expose your heart to associate with everybody. But that when you see there's no ill feeling, you settle every matter and leave no stone unturned. You can get there. When you're away, please God, it will make even your enemies to be at peace. <laughs> Are you with me? Let's link this up and allow you to go. Now, look at it. Let me show you a scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. 1 Corinthians chapter number 13. First Corinthians 13, if you are there, say amen. Okay, let's start the reading from verse 1. First Corinthians 13, verse 1. Let's look at this. One, two, three, go. Do I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not? Please give me a new King James. The word there is not charity. Charity qua. Yeah. Not charity. Can you be fast? The word there is love. That's the word there. That's the word there is love. Okay, thank you. Do I speak with the tongues of men and of angels and have not love? I become what? A sounding brass or a clanging cymbal. That's, that's, that's what. Can, can, you, can you give me the. I think I gave this illustration. I need somebody who does not play the drum because they, they will not be organized. Uh -huh. So, you, give, uh -huh. you understand? So, yes, louder. Me, the two, use the two. Yeah. Do you understand what he's doing? Make it louder and louder and beat it better and stronger. Can you hear me at the back? Can you hear me? Huh? Now let's check something. Can you hear me? At the back, can you hear me? You hear what I said? Okay. Louder. 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 Can you hear me at the back now? The things I'm teaching. The things I'm saying. When I say get up, do you understand what I'm saying? I say stand up, do you understand what I'm saying? You don't understand what I'm saying. That is how you sound when there's no love. You will speak to mountains, they won't move. They can't hear you. You are a sounding symbol. There's no clarity in what you are saying. Just by lack of love. If I say, please over at the back, please stand up, they will. Everything responds to clarity. You will look at a case in front of you. You are telling, be moved now. Psh, smallest demons will stand and say, who are you? Not because you are not anointed, but because you are a sounding, you are a clanging symbol. You have the anointing, but you are not clear. Do you understand what I'm saying? You have the anointing. Doesn't mean you don't have the anointing, but you are not what? Clear. You are far away. You are far away. You are far away. I'm giving you an illustration here. 
And that's why you see on the day of Pentecost, when, when the Holy Ghost came down, the Bible said there was a sound from heaven and it filled the room where they were seated. And there appeared on all of them, clothing what? Not eyes, tongues. Because the tongue will be the most important instrument for the new generation church, New Testament church. That is where your faith walk is seen. Faith has the root in the heart. The destination is on the lips. If your love walk is affected, you are a sounding symbol. You can't have faith. Check what I'm saying. Get walking in love right with all men. I'm telling you, the kind of doors you see open, you will not believe it. Because now we see the last idol man will worship himself. Paul said it. He said it will come to pass that perilous times shall come. Men shall be lovers of what? Themselves. So we find doctrine that makes us worship our self. The Bible is the Bible. It can't be broken. Are you following what I'm saying? Very important. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell you this. One time somebody just began to pick on me. I mean, I felt we're good. Just began to insult me. Tell me ah, this shoes. I said, I can't block this person. He's my brother. I wash my hands off this platform. Let somebody else continue. I will keep that love work and protect my focus. Because sometimes the source of harrows your heart is media. You're always thinking, media. If we get it right in homes. So this is what the devil wants to affect. As long as you are in pain, you can't really walk in the kind of love you should walk in. You perceive everyone and everything wrong. You can't walk in love. Oh, I understand the place of authority over unclean spirit. And I've seen that it's not such of much of a deep matter if we understand the dynamics of love work. Not that deep. We're in a location. Maybe for the sake of the sensitivity of what I want to say, let me just quote the country. And that place was, the place given to us there is a forbidden forest, if there's anything like that. Just one house, standing in the midst of. The closest house to us is owned by an abalist that will carry sacrifice, broad daylight. Are you with me? This is about 11 years ago. People will come out at night and be encountering strange spirits. You see people running, slamming the door, shout, middle of the night. Uh, do you know about haunted places? You think they are not real? Because you stay in Wuse. Night. One day I got up. I said, there's no problem. I will move my prayer time. Every night, I'm going to be outside and I'll pray till dawn. So I'll wake up in the middle of the night and go outside and sing songs. Oh, dance, we give you praise. By the time I've done that for over a month, the atmosphere of that place became electrified. No noise, no shouting, just flooding the place with love and worshipping Jesus. It became so serious, strange people step in and begin to shout. You can flood your place with the presence. <laughs> because you cannot live in these last days without authority. You cannot. The moment the home front is compromised, the, 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 see, it's your house is beyond the house. It's a home. The atmosphere becomes porous and open to strange spirits. Your children will manifest strange spirits because there's no unity. The, the gates are open. The gates are open. There's no watchman. That's why we strive to get it right. Are you with me? 
I, I, I'd love to give you several examples. Do you think it is a small thing that a couple can join hands in prayer? Even if it is five minutes, you are putting 10,000 to flight. The intention of the devil is to make sure it never happens. It will... Go and check. Decide that you are going to start giving yourself to certain practices. The day you are supposed to start, there will be warfare. You better weather it and know that it's because you want to do something right. So now give up. The Bible says, they that turn aside in the days of adversity, their strength is small. You must understand, there is a warfare against families and it begins with you as a single. They don't say, I'm not married, so this is not married. It starts with you. It takes a bad head to have a bad omelet. It begins with the single. You must understand that. There's serious warfare. I've shared my story. I was in SS3. A new girl just joined my class. And part of the local champions in class. I told the boy, stand down. He's for the boss. <laughs> you know. I noticed that the girl's dad will bring her early to school. So I started coming extra early. Now our school is around the GRA. So we just stroll, just looking at the flowers. Just looking at... I, I went to Kano recently and passed by that same year. Everyone was dry. Yeah. Well, we, where we used to stroll. Every morning, to stroll. Hmm. One day, we're having morning devotion. My dad just closed his eyes. And said, the Lord said, there's somebody here. I said, it's me. <laughs> me. I knew. I said, because it just looked as though God will not allow me to do what the rest were doing. He said, you think you are smart. You are going after a strange lady. The Lord said you are about to be embarrassed. I didn't say amen. I got up. Picked my... I can't remember whether it was Sonia Erickson phone. And called one boy that used to tease me with the guy. I said, Idris. That's the boy's name. For your life. No call me this girl husband again. I know they do. But how that it will pick them... At every slight moment you attempt something, you come to the house, it's open. That's the kind of homes God wants us to have. That your children are in school. You can call them. Lady, where are you? I'm not seeing you in your hostel. Actually, mommy, this, 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 this. When the girl is not going to pick the call, you send text. I'm seeing this, I'm seeing that. Power of intercession. Prophetic parenting. That's what we are talking about. That's what the devil is after. It is pleasant to him. It is pleasant to him. He wants to win. And we must know how to fight. Look at what the Bible... So, I'm saying this to let you know. What I'm teaching you is warfare. Forget about the fact that it's simple. Warfare. 2 Corinthians 10 from verse 3. 2 Corinthians 10 from verse 3. Please, quickly. 2 Corinthians 10 from verse 3. Though we walk in the flesh... We do not war according to the flesh. Mean that the people we are fighting, they are not in the flesh. So the question is not, why are you fighting me? The question is, who is trying to fight me through you? The question is, why are you making me annoyed? The question is, who is trying to annoy me through you? Second question, why are you available for the person? That's it. We walk in the flesh. We do not war after the flesh. Why? Verse 2 now. Verse 4, thank you. For the weapons of our warfare are not what? Canal. It means once you slide into carnality, you are not fighting right. The weapons are not canal. But they are mighty. True God. If deployed through God. For the pulling down of what? Strongholds. So stronghold is not just a thing of the mind. Sometimes the structure of the home can be a stronghold. That is the devil can hide there. Conveniently. Do your marathon fast, come back. You open the door, say, Are you done? Say, I'm done. Oh, yeah, let's start from where stop. Let's start from where we stop. Get it right. Confess your fault one to another. You offended me, and I was not happy. Even if the person will not apologize for the sake of the spiritual wall over the house, say it. 
that other day, the way you spoke to me, I didn't like it. And then you also look for a good moment to what? Say it. <laughs> are you with me? So the question is, why is not why are people trying to hurt me? The question is, why is the devil trying to hurt me through people? Many of them are not, they are not aware that they are playing a script. What is the devil after in my life? Why is he trying to use everyone to get at me? We must be spiritually vigilant. We must wake up spiritually. Amen. We must be spiritually what? Vigilant. We must wake up. Once we understand where things are coming from, you will know how to approach it. With the intelligence of the spirit, you will know how to approach it. It was not Judas trying to kill Jesus. It was the devil walking through Judas. It was not Judas. It was not Judas. Was, Judas was just that guy that wanted to make his own money. He felt Jesus, don't forget that he was the one that was from Jesus' village. He felt he's going to disappear as usual. So, let me make money off these guys and bounce. But he didn't know. That he was acting a script. And this time around, he won't disappear. And he was shocked. He was so caught to his heart when they were nailing Jesus to the cross and they were slapping him and nothing was happening. And they stripped him naked. He went to kill himself. He couldn't bear it. That's not some bad guy. True? That's not a bad guy. He just wanted to make his money. So many of the people you are reacting, you know, hard, you are leaving the enemy to face them. And that's why <clears throat> but let me say this if God has called you to do ministry you want to make sure that the people in your immediate sphere are praying the one who is not praying will be the access point to bring you down never say anyone is in your inner, inner space if they are not praying they will be the one vulnerable to put food on the fire till the house will get burnt the idea is anything to stop him from doing what he's doing uh God. Am I going too far now? So these are still basic. Sometimes it could be a photographer in a meeting. Person is snapping. Your person is snapping. You notice virtue is leaving. Uh, you don't know what I'm saying. Uh, only to find out the person's heart is not right. And that's why, you know, people will have sat under my teachings here. When I come to a prophetic meeting, I select who sing, who stand there, who do this. The first, I select everything. Once I'm moving in the prophetic, whoever will say, who back up this, 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 everyone selected. And this is the routine. Because one slight thing can tip you off and you have missed the inheritance of a church. It's a serious thing. That's why there's protocol around prophets. People don't understand. Why are they like this? Don't mind them. Men of God or God of men. Shh. If you don't know what it is. Why do you think Jesus had 12, then had 3? And when he, when the going gets tough, he goes with those 3 to pray more than the rest. And you have your own 3, but your spouse is not among them. You wonder Abraham will come from the mountain and Sarah will say, go and stay with my house girl. Because you are not speaking from the same plane. You are far apart spiritually. Don't leave your spouse behind. Carry them. Do you understand what I'm saying? If not, all the things you have received, it will be leaking there. That's where everything will come. <laughs> Pray. I sense we should take some few minutes to arrive tongues. And shake off certain dust. Just shake off certain things. So you can come to a plane where you can receive better. Come on. Let's do so. Let's do so. Charge. 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 I want everybody to pray. Charge. Mente copaye 
Mene Mokopai. Lincoln Palante Kopai. Ricky Polene Sente Kebroti. Ricky Palane Monte Kebrepe Nakai. Embrebe Kumbrebe Kopai. Lente Kembrebe Kopai. Shante Kembrebe Kopa. Lanta Kaide Eketo. Sile Kepai. Lente Kopaya. Hear us now, O God of all the earth, as we pray, as we pray. Hear us now, O God of all the earth, as we pray, as we pray. Hear us now, O God, of all the earth, as we pray, as we pray. Ye kampala takai, ye ne mon pele ke pai, son pele ke tele motai, as we pray, as we pray. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Our story in the city of Abuja is similar to the story of Jacob, who said, By my road I have passed through Jordan, but now the Lord has made me two bands. You will remember how that recently God sent us to Abuja in what I will call the most humble movement. We came practically trusting God for what to do next and how he's going to help us with the words of prophecies he has given to us about the city and the armies he raising. And guess what? God is doing just that. Recently, we have been seeing the move of God in the most unbelievable way possible with his word reaching the unreached, converting sinners to saints, bringing people who have lost hope in church. And now this has necessitated the need for expansion so that we do not fall out of what God is doing. Where we are currently is stringent for us with rules that will limit what God is doing amongst us. The gospel is free, but the propagation requires a lot of funding. We want our friends, partners, and everyone connected to our ministry to join us as we undertake this project together. We have the urgent need to expand, and we believe that this is the Kairos moment for us to do that. We are importing our own tent all the way from China and getting everything needed to fill that space and have a conducive place where we can have our apostolic work beyond what we are having now at the moment. The structure you are seeing on your screen is exactly what we are working at at the moment. Believe you me when we say that people who are blessed can be blessed much more when we have our own place. We want you to join us as we undertake this project. We need your support. We're counting on you and your generosity. We are working towards a project of 180 million naira in this season. You have the account details on the screen. Use the account details as God has laid in your heart. God bless you so much. We love you from all of us at Sphere of Light Church. Thank you for always. Time only. And this is the mandate that he has given to us. Truly the harvest is plenteous but we need you on board as a laborer. This is a call to partner with what God is doing in this great house. To become a monthly partner with us at Sphere of Light Church and Femme Lazarus Apostolic Ministries Ecumenical, can you reach us via the number plus 234-903-095-9735. To give an offering or to sow a seed, can you make use of these account details being displayed? The gospel of Jesus is spreading. Thank you for being a part of it. Please be seated for a few moments. This is holy ground. Hear me now. This is holy ground. My friend. 
Open your eyes, open your ears, till you understand that the Lord is here. Open oh. your eyes, open your ears, so you understand that the Lord Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. So, listen, let me tell you. So, I'm, I've linked back now. So, here's what the devil is going to do the areas of pain and injury that you didn't get healed from, they are consistent access way to your life such that it doesn't matter what anyone is doing to get at you the one that will get the job done is the one that touches the area where you have not been healed it could be a question it could be something that reminds you of that area as long as there is no healing the devil knows he can draw you with that rope again and again maybe a pain in the heart from a rape A rapist is doing more than just breaking a girl's eye, man. Or sleeping with a girl. A rapist is causing internal injury. And what the devil wants to do is to use that injury, number one, to destroy the person's perspective towards the opposite sex. Number two, to destroy the idea of sex in marriage. That's what he wants to do. That the fellow can no longer perceive it right. So, as long as that pain is there, it is a consistent contact point. And the devil understands this. That anything you are not healed from, he can use it. Anything. He can use it at any time. He will come in gallantly and just flip that card. And there you go, you respond. You respond. Look at the number of times the devil has tried to get you angry and offended. What gets the job done always? What gets the job done always? Lift your hand. Say, I release all pains. Let's take it a step further. Say, I forgive and I let go. Is there anyone that you need to forgive and just put their picture in your mind? Somebody said, how do you know you are forgiven when there's no more heal feeling towards the person? When there's no more pain every time they come across your mind? When all you have is love? Do you want to mention names to God? and say, I let go. Just take a minute and do that. Maybe an hex. Maybe someone, an uncle, who try to take advantage of you. Maybe a pastor. Yeah. Say, I let go. I will not allow you to live rent free in my mind, in my life, in my destiny. I forgive you. And you should move from the point of doing that to blessing the person now. Release blessings. I bless you. I bless you. Yeah. So I, I release you from my mind. You are no longer imprisoned in my mind. I forgive you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Now let me give you this clue. I understand that it's difficult to forgive some people because they have not changed. And they are still entitled in what they are doing wrong. But you forgive not for the sake of the person but for your own sake. It is until then that pure oil will flow from you. I shared the story with you. One of them... Only. 
Ah. Oh Lord. So I saw this video. This guy had just killed this guy's only brother and was in the court. All the things the judge was saying, the guy was just looking. Talk about people who are already dead. They are inside. They are already in pain too. But when the guy stood up whose brother was killed, he said, I just want you to know that Jesus loves you and I have nothing against you. I know the devil has moved you to do this, but I forgive you from my heart. And he asked him, can I hug you? And he went to hug the guy who killed his brother. It was until then that that guy broke into tears. The world just needs to see Jesus through our eyes. Let me tell you my story. That's why I had deep breath. Because sometimes people feel maybe you don't know what you are talking about as a pastor. What makes you feel once you are holding the mic you can talk to us? Hold on. The person who had hurt me the most in my life, this woman told me, if I can't kill you, I will make sure you kill yourself. And she was walking at it gallantly. That by yourself, you, I will frustrate your life, you will die. And several times she would tell me, you know you will die young. Face to face. This one is not somebody telling you your dream. And one day she called me. I was raining curses, saying things. And for over 16 minutes, she was talking non-stop. So I said to her, I said, are you done? So I said to her, I know you are afraid of me. That's why you are doing what you are doing. I said, what do you say? I, said, I know you are afraid of me. I said, you, I know you know that God is going to lift me and you feel I'm going to maltreat your children in vengeance. If only you know how much I love you. That was when she broke in tears. On Sunday, we had that conversation on Saturday. Sunday, she came out for altar call as a pastor's wife. She said she was still practicing Islam and the husband didn't know. Talking about let the world see Jesus. Free. Vengeance is mine, says the Lord. And he knows how to appropriate it. But forgive in such a way that you don't even need the vengeance. Labaka. Let go. After all, all the things that were done against you have built you. You have become stronger. I know the pain is there, but God has done some things through those pains. Amen. Amen. Say it again, I forgive you. You know the person now. That one. Mm, that one sitting at that throne in your mind. Forgive You know, sometimes you just have to call people randomly and just say, you know what? <laughs> I'm forgiving you. Guess what the person will say? Nonsense. What's my business? I'm going get off my phone. Shoo. I hope your maturity would have gone beyond that. That you have shifted. It's person who have not moved. See forgiveness. Not because the fellow has changed, but because you have grown. Amen. Amen. You can practice it. You can practice it. You become stronger. You become stronger. So, when we teach this, they are not emotional topic. We are not sensitizing people emotionally. We are going to the roots where the devil is hanging. When we get this right, the church will walk in unbelievable level of authority. Do you know the reason why the Nigerian church seems powerless despite the graces? Lack of unity. There is an authority that only comes as a body. As a body. There is nothing deep in Nigeria that the authority of the church cannot uproot. But it is amazing how that people now believe. Not that this man of God has been caught in any morality, any sin or his fetish. That once we don't agree, we must never meet. 
Unity is not uniformity. Oh. It's not uniformity. To everyone with their unique graces. Now let me show you something. Why will God have to give the body of Christ different dimensions of graces? Because the devil is not doing the same thing. There are people that no matter what I teach, they will not listen. They feel what you are teaching is for those who are baby Christians. No problem. And I know it's not for baby Christians. But that's where they are. They will listen to another man of God and sit down and bless me more. There are people that will not listen to those ones. They say, we stick with the fathers. Anything the devil is trying to do, God has sons to attack it. That's the idea. Okay? Mm -hmm. There are people that will come to Sphere of Light and say, this is my home. People that will come and say, ah, no, ah, no, no, no. I want a place where they will gyrate. And that, it tells about where they are coming from and where they are. It doesn't mean they are bad people. If you say this is what you want, God say, I have a son who is there. Follow me, let's go. Do you understand what I'm saying? And we must understand that there is a meeting point for all our works. And the meeting point is the cross. That's the meeting point. <sighs> that if we step in that place of our highest authority through unity, not uniformity, through unity, we we'll put the enemy on the flight. Send him out. Send him packing out of the country. I don't know if that day will ever come. Where the entire Nigerian church will say, let's do three days. The first question is, the person who is calling for it, which church is he from? What is their doctrine? Ah, see the pastor's wife. You know, tie a calf. A tie. That's it though. What God wants to do, we've thrown it away because of scarf. Their church, they, they wear trousers. That's it. An entire agenda destroyed. That's why they don't take us serious. Occultic people are united. That's why they don't take us. We look like a joke. We preach it, but we don't do it. People who are drinking palm wine together. If somebody make a meal, can tell the person, oh boy, ah, last night this this happened. They will counsel the person. There are a few pastors you can tell I made a mistake that you not become a salmon the following Sunday. Ah. Sometimes somebody was saying that Apostle Lazarus, you are preaching user friendly message. I said, listen, we are the ones counseling your members. Shh. If you know, you say hey, all these people, many people live in sin. I have sons who have come to meet me and say, Apostle, I kissed the girl. I said, is that so? Okay, let's talk. I'm glad at least they can tell me. So it's not like every time, call me, Apostle, I kiss. Go and use that mouth to pray. <laughs> but in the place where people pretend, that's where you have the worst atrocities. And they can't, people are dying in silence. And come out. <laughs> and still criticize <laughs> those who are, whose own have come out publicly. Ketwil is calling pot black. The one masturbating is, is calling out a fornicator. You see, you see, you are sanctifying the body of Christ. You don't even know the body of Christ. You know, let me tell you, by divine privilege, I am close to fathers and I'm close to younger ministers too. I, I think one of the things God has done for me in the body of Christ is that I don't actually belong to any sect. I just do my stuff. And once you are an enemy of a person, that doesn't mean I should be the enemy of the person. I know. Enemy should not be inherited. Ah, no. Okay? But I watched the program Generational Shift was it last year or two years ago? Bishop Francis Valley came two years ago. <laughs> Let me leave you to. <laughs> I believe that day will come in my lifetime that the fathers and the children will unite. 
let me show you what will happen when that happens. Malachi chapter number four, is it the last verse now? Second to the last verse and the last verse. Let me show you what will happen according to scripture when that will happen. Now it's an apostolic movement that should bring that. But unfortunately, we believe the apostolic movement now is to divide. He said, I will send Elijah the prophet. Okay? Before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. Yes, verse 6 now. It will turn the heart of the fathers to the children. And the heart of the children to the father. He said, lest I come and strike the earth with a curse. It means whenever there is that division, what you will see is a curse. You want to see healing. Bring the heart back. Many church members are working in pain. Pastors too are in pain. Fathers too are in pain. Who is now causing the pain? People will share their stories. Everybody have their own stories. So who is behind all this? The devil causing confusions. The devil is causing... And the reason why we are not patient for many to be said to be said to be because it is not a deal breaker until it strikes an area of your injury. I know what I'm saying now. I know the devil doesn't like what I'm teaching. And I know he's going to raise many people against it. But we have not come this far <laughs> to teach what people want to hear. This is where the devil is hiding. You will walk in authority when you begin to walk in love. Powerful authority. Unbelievable level of authority. Ooh. Are you with me? Are you learning something? Okay. So let's look at the possible cause of traumas that cause pain. Possible causes of traumas that cause pain. Number one, bad experience. Bad experience. Bad experience with an ex. Bad experience with a friend. Bad experience with someone past relationship the person is gone but the effect is still there for the sake of my time I'm going to have to erase through this number two possible cause of trauma is dysfunctional background dysfunctional background when the background is compromised a lot of things will go wrong when the background is compromised a lot of things will go wrong a lot of things Sometimes it could be a hateful father or a hateful mother or missing father or missing mother or wayward father or wayward mother. Talk about when those who should give you a sense of identity gets it wrong themselves. How can the father of a child hate the child and hate to see the child? The mother of a child ate the child. How about children? So the Bible says that can a woman give birth to a child for forsake her sucking child? It looks like the answer was no. Or is the answer still no? People are giving birth and will dump the baby in a poly bag outside. People are giving birth and will sell their own children. When such a child grows up to hear the story that his or her mother sold her for 250,000 naira and the mother is still there. Say, now that you are working, send money home. Every time the child remembers, what do you think will happen? Talk to me. These are people's reality. <laughs> or a child grew up seeing different people come to embarrass the father. See, see people that are like your age mate. And your father is winning them. I will call him name. I will give birth to you. You are wondering, is there still hope? That's why the fall of a man of God is very loud. Because it communicates to a generation that is there still hope. The higher you go, the louder your fall. May you stand forever. These are issues. So when there are experiences like this, Bad dysfunctional background. It settles in the heart. And the person keeps wondering, will I do better? And unfortunately, some parents are so cruel, they will tell the child, you will repeat the same pattern. Out of anger. 
Say you think you are better than us. You think you are better than us. Okay, you too, you are, you, are, you, are, you, are, you are doing your own. You will see where you will end. And that child will never forget. Some people are waiting for their own children to fail so that they can be vindicated. And say that, so you think you know better than us. Now you have seen it. You will not fail. Ah, oh, you didn't say the amen well enough. Those who are waiting for you to fail will wait in vain. They will wait in vain. You will not fail. Unto him that is able to keep you from falling. Unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And present you spotless before the Father. Listen. God will not take you high and leave you to fall. The hand taking you up will keep you. Don't Listen. Don't be afraid. That maybe as I'm climbing like I now, one day you just die. You are not going anywhere. The one who is taking you up will keep you. No sickness is coming. I said no sickness is coming. No sickness will scatter your home. You will not fail. Don't be afraid of greatness because you may, so, you may suddenly drop. Never. It's your right. Step in there. Is that clear? Never be afraid. Maybe you think God is giving you speed. That you are moving too fast. Run when he gives you the scepter early. Take it early. Early will I satisfy you with mercy. That is his word. The devil brings intimidation to harass your mind. Make you feel that it's too early for you. Postpone it for another 10 years so you can miss seasons. Now lie. Take it early. If God is giving you early, take it early. Amen. Thank you, Lord. It's unfortunate, but that's the case. Many people are waiting for their family members to come back with reproach. Say, say you are the, say you are the one serving Jesus. You are the one going to church. You are the one. You think you are holier than us. We have kept your room in the village. You are coming back there, but now lie. Yes, and sometimes the fear of this statement also makes people stay under abusive marriages where they die. We must get the balance. Never. Are you following what I'm saying here? One time I'm going to take it as a subject: abuse in marriage. The subject. So it's better to be alive and make up than to die. Uh -huh. There's a place it gets to. People separate and say, you know what? This thing will take my life. Are you following what I'm saying here? Balance. Oh. Balance. So we don't demonize people. Ah. Balance. Oh. Functional background. When some people just remember their family, they hate the idea of marriage. Just remember. A guy is talking and the guy is making sense, and just the moment she remembers, just tell the guy, just start ghosting the guy. You know what? I will talk to him other time. Every time he talks, she's feeling irritated from inside. It's not the guy, it's the pain that is not healed. And that's what the devil likes. So he can control and manipulate your life with that pain. It's part of the causes or the, the, the sources of trauma. Number three, rape. Rape. <clears throat> rape. And it is amazing how that in this part of the world we shame rape victims. When somebody is raped, you don't tell the person who is raped to bring evidence. Was the person moving with CCTV camera knowing that he will be raped? He or she, because let's put he or she. Because now our world is getting more serious. The guys, they rape them all. Clean, clean. Ah, it, it happened. But the most common one is the female. Right? Uh -huh. And sometimes when these things happen and they happen in places that are so sensitive, you know, some parents will prefer, they say they are covering the girl. So people will not know. And they will now cover the puppet. of that. They will cover the person too who has done it. And say, don't tell anybody. Some will even call their daughter. Uh, it's a doctress. You are the one seducing men. 
look at you. You walk like a prostitute. An uncle has raped a girl. You cover the uncle because people should not hear. I don't think there's any road that is more lonely than, than the rope of a rape victim. We don't seem to have structure, societal structure, family structure. We don't seem to cover all those things. And that's a very, very serious matter. There are pastors that abuse girls. Yes. Indiscriminately, they will touch them. You and the man of God are chatting. You start chatting, and I just like your shape. Run. Run. You two, you are enjoying it. Hey, ah, Papa. <laughs> ah, Papa, what are you saying like this? Ah. What will Mama say if you see this, our chat? Sefini. <laughs> you like it. Run. And I consider it the highest bridge of trust. For a man of God to descend that low. The highest. Yes. Don't let anything God has placed under you die. Hey, Joe. Who are seeking refuge in church? <laughs> you know, in Nigeria, we are very quick to say, I stand with Pastor. And you wonder, where should the person go to? Somebody has been abused there. We are not even asking questions. Oh, the ministry is under attack. They are trying to attack him. These are sensitive matters. They are only sensitive because we don't like truth. Hmm. We don't like truth. Maybe some pastors can't preach it because they are afraid that what if it is their turn? It will never be your turn in Jesus' name. Yeah. Rape, sexual abuse, a very serious matter. Take people years, if ever they recover, to recover from it. You must wake up, smell the coffee. Number four, disappointment. Imagine dating for six years only to leave the person in the month of introduction. When that guy is dropping his own proposal, she's looking at his mouth, saying at them, I like you. She's just hearing, when he's done talking, hey, can we talk some other time? Disappointment is deep. It's deep. And that's why. Let me give you two secrets. Are you with me? Are you sure? It's getting quiet. Are you sure you're with me? Yes, two secrets. Number one. Never see any human being as the proof of God's love. The highest expression of God's love is that he has given his only begotten son. That's the highest. Number two, never see any human being as the doorway to the fulfillment of your destiny. That's why breakup looks like destiny is gone. Gosh. Maybe God told a girl that you marry a pastor and you were dating a pastor true true. then the pastor broke up. And all the guys coming are no longer pastors. And you see yourself as a pastor's wife for a long time. What do you do? You take what God is giving you. God can call people at any time. And that person's dimension of ministry may never be holding the microphone. And the person will be stronger than the so-called pastors. And sometimes you didn't hear well. You only fantasized. Childhood dreams can be deep. You understand? Sometimes you didn't hear well. It's not true that people don't like pastors. People like pastors. The, the, your silence is the proof that I'm right. 
is psychological. <laughs> Number five, possible cause of trauma, divorce. Divorce. Divorce is synonymous to your spouse dying, but it's still resurrected now. You are seeing the person everywhere, but there's no more connection. Someone who has died but won't leave the earth. <laughs> everywhere you turn, you see the person there. Matters around children, the person will resurrect again. Matters around school, this person will resurrect again. God hates it. He doesn't hate the divorcee. He hates what he does to you. So if you have, you've gone separate with a spouse, gone separate ways, that doesn't mean God wants to kill you. Okay? This is a sensitive matter we can't teach in five minutes. So I'd recommend the book by Kenneth e. again, Marriage, Divorce, and Remarriage. I recommend that book. Solid biblical perspective about it. Doctrinal. Can a divorced person remarry? Read that book. There was this um, interview recently by Pastor Kingsley Okonkwo and Dr. Lumide Emanuel. Do you read those things? Do you check them? Your marriage is already good. Don't prepare yourself for divorce. Ah. Ah, Abba. Watch the one on... Um, 50 years anniversary, how they have enjoyed it. Hey, watch that one. Is that clear? It is not every material that is for everybody. Uh -huh. Not every book you buy at the bookshop, you buy the books that align with your season, not just for the topic, the season. Uh -huh. That's how we do it. Amen. So let me just list here. Let me say this. If for any reason you've had to go through a divorce with somebody and you have separated officially, always remember the reason why it was necessary so you'll not be living a regret. Because the more distant people are, the more attractive they become. Because you may be feeling that woman is enjoying what I should have been enjoying. Are you sure it's enjoyment? Because when it came close, you know what you saw. Okay? Everything is attractive when it is far. But when there's proximity, there's what? Clarity. Is it simple enough? It's a heavy matter. Wait, let me just leave it. Okay. These issues of trauma can affect your marriage in the following ways. Number one, can affect your marriage in the following way. Number one, little or no interest in the subject of marriage. People get to a point where they are not interested. It's not for me. Just leave me. I want to be a baby mama. That's all. Why do you think most footballers don't even want to get married? It's trauma. Because they've seen out that one of their colleagues fell in love, married the girl. <laughs> the girl will come and say divorce. They will say they will share the wealth into two. <laughs> Whenever that happens, <laughs> fear will ring through their camp. I say, you see why I will not marry yet? Even your idol, football idol, what do you call them now? Uh, they are not there. Little, little or no interest in the subject of marriage. Number two, Lack of emotional connection or loss of emotional connection towards your spouse. Lack that is not at all, not there. Or loss, it's, it's left now. Of emotional attraction or connection towards your spouse. Again, I want to reiterate. Don't marry somebody you don't love. Love will not meet you inside. Um, agape is different from this one. I, I love him as my brother in the Lord. It's why he's not brother in the Lord. 
say, eh, I don't love him. I'm not attracted. In fact, when he talks, I feel irritated. But since it is God, which God? Amadi or Hao Shango, which God? No, we need to get it right. Every relationship that will last stand on three legs. Number one, attraction. Or number one, sorry, conviction. Number two, purpose. Conviction in the sense that you heard God and you know this is God. Number two, purpose. In the sense that you are going to, um, to, um, to similar direction. Okay? Not necessarily the same place, but similar. That is, my vision does not have to die for yours to survive. That's the connection. Number three, attraction. You must be physically attracted. If you look at the person and the fellow just look like a brother or sister in the Lord, wait till that thing is repaired before you say, I do. If not, I do might be you that have entered into a trap. And because people who are in that trap can't talk, I'm warning you ahead. So that you will not take your spouse as a dealing from the Lord. Nobody's spouse is supposed to be a dealing. God is not dealing. Do you understand what I'm saying? Say, God has seen this in my heart, so God gave me this place to deal with my heart. <laughs> eh? If not that, it's, it's public on social media already that what I'm thinking. I will have settled down to show you know yourself and to yourself be true. <laughs> Let's leave it up. So number one, I said little or no interest in the subject of marriage. Number two, lack or loss of emotional connection to your spouse. Number three, reactional tendencies towards issues at home. If once emotional connection is lost, you will almost be behaving irrationally. Because you will feel that this person in your life is a mistake. So you will not be rational. Okay? And if you are married and the emotional connection is lost, check who is taking that emotional space. There is no way there will be nobody. There will always be somebody that you are allowed. Either intentionally or ignorantly. There will always be somebody. That space is not usually empty. Maybe as a woman, you just lost connection to your husband. Then there is somebody you are liking. There is. Maybe you have not told yourself the truth. As a man, you just lost connection to your wife. There's somebody you are liking. You've just not told yourself the truth. And once you tell yourself the truth, copy and contrast. You'll see that you are wrong. Whatsoever you saw that made you say, I will marry you, stay with it. Stay with it. Amen. Are you with me? Are you sure? So, reactional tendencies towards certain issues at home. Sometimes people overreact. Like killing an hand to sledge a When that happens, the person is not reacting to the issue of the person. The person is reacting to what the issue of the person reminds him or her of. So you need to ask yourself, why am I reacting? Why am I overreacting? What am I seeing? You must have moment of truth where you internalize matters. Check, introspect, answer the questions. Okay? That's where it, you, there will be no healing until there's truth. Yes. You have to come to that point. Are you still there? Number four now. The pain of the past of the traumas of the past can make you suspicious. Become suspicious of your spouse's every move. What is he talking? Who is talking to? Who is on phone? Who message you now? This is whose picture is this? This is you can't really monitor anybody. Else. Even God hacks Adam, where are thou? God, oh. Say we are hiding. Give yourself peace, oh. Just advice. 
major pharmaceutical companies are leaving the country now. So major medications for high blood pressure. They are really, they've increased. Some of them times three of the price. Okay? So sickness is not economical now. You can't, are you following what I'm saying? Give yourself peace. Don't die for your children. Oh. Okay? Now, I'm, I'm, I'm saying what I'm saying bluntly. Oh. Give yourself peace. Uh -huh. That's my advice. If you have married what you have married and you are seeing what you are seeing, find a way. What's the coping mechanism around this thing? <laughs> no, you have to tell yourself that. Okay, so let's first accept that this is the fact. If I face it the way I want to face it, I will die early. So, how do I cope around this person and this issue? T tell yourself, sit yourself down. Talk yourself into sense. So you will have peace of mind. Then you can approach it from there. Because there are people that if you die, they are happy that they will marry somebody else. Sharply. So, don't die. When you can live. Tell your neighbor, don't die. Give yourself peace. Uh, give yourself peace. Give yourself peace. Huh? You just came out from work. Huh? Come, come, come. Let me smell your clothes. I'm smelling that perfume. Eee. It's goat that has no sniff. <laughs> now, now, you start sniffing. Say, what perfume is this? This is not your perfume. This is not. Who did you hug? Hey. How will you clock 70 with this kind of mind? <laughs> As you are doing those things, you are just saying, <laughs> you don't know what that means. <laughs> Give yourself peace. Let me wrap up by telling you this. There are three stages in every marriage. Number one is the, should I call it the initial gra, -gra. Young couples in the blog. Selfie. <laughs> they peppered you, so you have to pepper somebody. No problem. That's phase one. That phase one comes with something people don't prepare for. It's called culture shock. <laughs> As the thing is sweeting you, you are admitting something inside. Say, ah, is this you? <laughs> <laughs> and it happens to everybody. Okay? It happens to everybody. When myself and my wife got married, it took me close to three months to really now say that I'm a married man. Because I thought the feeling would change. I would just now feel married. I didn't know you not feel married though. So in case you don't know, I'll give you a past question. <laughs> you won't feel married though. It's just, it's just it's the same thing. It's, and it was weird. <sighs> I'll be inside the bed to my wife say, I want to come. Come in where? I've locked the door. I've locked the door. I want to change. I'll go to another room, visitor's room, to change. Fuck a girl in my space. Ha. Ah. She will come and say, I'm your wife. I'm my wife. She man's her space. I am your wife. I said, I know. But I'm still adjusting. So there's culture shock. Many things are shocking. <laughs> hey, let me go into details. Okay? But there's a second phase, which is the adjustment phase. Having seen different things, you now start adjusting to your reality. Adjusting to the fact that this person snore like a generator. <laughs> and no amount of prayer can stop it. The higher you pray, ah! You've never seen you each time you go to where was that all the restaurant you eat shahama and all shh. Have you seen when a woman remove wig? Look again, I say. <laughs> oh, the onion. That's it. Oh. You are shocked. They are married now. When they start washing the makeup, all the eyebrow, all the things you are seeing, they remove the contact lens. <laughs> You better make sure that what brought you is more than. So there's an adjustment phase where you wake up at night and say, okay, so I know. 
that God has created a strategy for me to pray overnight. And the strategy is this morning. So, back and back and ah. <laughs> Marriage, not like a father rice. No matter how hard you try, you go chop stone. So, select your own stone. In peace. You go still chop stone. If you know the snow, something else go happen. You go chop snow. Don't say, I just like her. She, she was like an angel. Hey. <laughs> angel Bola. <laughs> hey. Okay. There's the adjustment phase. And sometimes it can be tough. There are things that you have said I will never adjust to. And later you say, that, okay. For the sake of peace, I have to adjust. Then there's the final phase. Which is called the phase of acceptance. Now, let me tell you. Acceptance phase doesn't mean that this fellow has changed. Acceptance phase is, now I have agreed. This is what I married. You can enter acceptance phase early. You can wait till 60. Daddy Gio said, the equation one for marriage is that angels don't eat jollof rice. So if this fellow eats rice, he's not an angel. If you like, study number with angel. This one is here. This angel, all of us, they say, I'm the day you accept that, see, this is who my spouse is. Myself and my wife, when we got married, all the things she was complaining about me and the things I was complaining about her, the one she's complaining about me, now she's the one doing them. The one she, I'm complaining about her. I mean, they don't. We crossed. She was learning my way. I was learning strange. That's it. Once you know this, know it and know peace. The moment you say, I will change my spouse, frustration mode activated. The thing that God did not succeed in doing, thought you met him. The mother did not succeed in doing. All the fellowship and the places that started, they did not succeed. You think? You will... I carry your load as you say, I'm, I'm, I'm coming. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm telling you. You don't believe. Say, ah, no. I know I'm going to. My wife said, babe, I don't eat onion. Say, ah, you will like it. I said, see. <laughs> Even at gump, there's nothing any human being can do. I know they chop up. See, there's a way I would, I don't, there, see, there's no way. <laughs> now, if onions enter the house, once I step in, ah, ah something is here. It's not discernment. It's hatred. I, ah, what's going on? I say, eh, I made no dues. I just put some on your side. Don't come close to me. No pecking to do. <laughs> go, ahead, uh, go and brush. <laughs> now in our house, it doesn't enter. See, these things are not deep. You are the one giving yourself a job that God didn't give you. It's not deep. Just accept that this one likes to, when, he, when he's playing something on his phone, it's very low. Because it's considered. The other one, loud. Hey, babe, can you please turn it? Don't be getting angry. Your blood pressure is rising. But it, listen, it is difficult to even be angry at somebody who doesn't know you are angry. That you are getting angry. You are. You say, babe, are you doing it? You are looking at it. Look at person I'm angry at. So, he doesn't know. You've wasted emotions. Waste. So just communicate it. I don't like what you have done. A man will understand that one better. Men, and I heard our update, we don't know. All the time my wife has tried to give me non-verbal communication. I know no. You say, but I know you're a sexy person. If this is happening in church, you will know quickly. I say, this is not church. <laughs> this is home. The house. If I've done something, tell me. To say you will give me action for me to find out. I will not find out. There's no exam. I will not know. You know, I pray to God. Remind him. Me, I'm thinking missions. He know go remind me. Or he will say it. I won't hear. Tell me yourself. Once people enter the acceptance phase, this is what I've married. Your peace has started. That's it. And every marriage goes through this phase. Have you been blessed today? Let's give Jesus a big, big, big hand.
you know, say apostle is deeper than that. I know. Because there are things that it matters what you are also accepting. So you too, you have to go and find out what am I willing to accept? If they smoke it, both accept them. <laughs> <laughs> Ask yourself, oh, can I accept this? Ask oh. I, 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 I can do all things through Christ. Who strength it? You get kind. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm I'm saying it now because these things are very deep and we have to pay attention. All the person's um, bad behavior, like I say, I just like it. It's romantic when he does that. When you might, it will not be romantic again. To be frustrating you now. So, just tell yourself now that even if God give you clay to make your own, it go even bad. You will get the nose wrongly everything. So, understand, wherever I marry, this place exists. There will be culture shock. There will be adjustment. And there will be acceptance. But in all these things, if you, if you learn friendship from the beginning, it will carry you through. It will. People who are better friends do better. They talk. Do you, you get what I'm saying? They talk themselves through seasons. Through seasons. You marry somebody you can't talk to the way you feel. It's already abusive. It's already abusive. Amen. Let's, let's rise on our feet and just give God thanks for the words we've heard. Let's give him thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the praise. I ask that homes are healed. Yes. There is supply of wisdom yes. and help in the name of Jesus. You go back home knowing what to do. And all the singles that are here, God will help you stay better prepared. Amen. Your hands will not be wrongly joined in marriage. Amen. You will not miss God's will for your life. Amen. I rebuke fears and I ask that every pain is healed in the name of Jesus. It is done. In Jesus' mighty name. Let's give Jesus a big, big hand. Amen. So on Sunday, we start two services. 8 to 10. So l let me say this. It, we're going to be slightly a bit earlier than 8. Maybe like 7.50. And then we're going to close earlier than 10. So that people can vacate the hall. And then new people can come. And then there can be re-preparation again. So more like 10 minutes window people to pack out. So we're going to make sure that we make everything more conducive, particularly driving out and driving in for people. So we will have to adjust together. Is that okay? I mean, this new season. I um, want to thank God for the people working with us behind the scene as touching our construction work. Whew. The time is here, okay? So God will help us in the name of Jesus. Um, our story in the city of Abuja is similar to the story of Jacob, who said, By my rod I have passed through Jordan, but now the Lord has made me two bands. You will remember how that recently God sent us to Abuja in what I will call the most humble movement. We came practically trusting God for what to do next and how he's going to help us with the words of prophecies he has given to us about the city and the army's raising. And guess what? God is doing just that. Recently, we have been seeing the move of God in the most unbelievable way possible, with his word reaching the unreached, converting sinners to saints, bringing people who have lost hope in church. And now this has necessitated the need for expansion so that we do not fall out of what God is doing. Where we are currently is stringent for us, with rules that will limit what God is doing amongst us. The gospel is free, but the propagation requires a lot of funding. We want our friends, partners, and everyone connected to our ministry to join us as we undertake this project together. We have the urgent need to expand, and we believe that this is the Kairos moment for us to do that. We are importing our own tent all the way from China and getting everything needed to fill that space and have a conducive place where we can have our apostolic work beyond what we are having now at the moment. The structure you are seeing on your screen is exactly what we are working at at the moment. Believe you me when we say that people who are blessed 
can be blessed much more when we have our own place. We want you to join us as we undertake this project. We need your support. We are counting on you and your generosity. We are working towards a project of 180 million naira in this season. You have the account details on the screen. Use the account details as God has laid in your heart. God bless you so much. We love you from all of us at Spelled Light Church. Thank you for always. Time only. And this is the mandate that he has given to us. Truly the harvest is plenteous, but we need you on board as a laborer. This is a call to partner with what God is doing in this great house. To become a monthly partner with us at Sphere of Light Church and Femme Lazarus Apostolic Ministries Ecumenical, can you reach us via the number plus 234-903-095-9735. To give an offering or to sow a seed, kindly make use of these account details being displayed. The gospel of Jesus is spreading. Thank you for being a part of it.